Uh, your reaction to criticism, uh, Tribune editorial used the term irascible. Uh, how much of this do you think might have to do with the fact that you're a woman and partic specifically a black woman? About 99% of it. Expand on that. Well, I mean, look, look at my predecessors. Um, did, did people say that Rich Daly um, held, uh, you know, uh, uh, tea sessions uh, with people that he didn't disagree on? Uh, Rahm Emanuel was a polite um, guy who was a, a uniter. No. Women and people of color are always held to a different standard. I understand that. I've known that my whole life. And the Tribune or whoever can write what they want. What I'm doing is fighting for the residents of the city. I'm an advocate. I'm going to continue fighting. Um, obviously, we need to be focused on uniting people as much as we can. But I, I was elected and ran on disrupting the status quo. And when you disrupt the status quo, you are going to make um, people uncomfortable. You are going to have people criticize you. All right, guys. So we got to talk about Lori Lightfoot once again because she truly is the gift that keeps on giving. Okay, even after getting blown out last night uh, in a loss for her reelection as Chicago mayor. Uh, she gives me more reasons to make videos about her because she's crying racism and sexism in response to her loss, okay? Which, I mean, is par for the course when it comes to these Democrat politicians, especially the ones that, again, uh, are so-called minorities, okay? The ones that are supposed to be oppressed despite being in positions of power. Uh, when they lose, instead of self-reflecting on why they lost, okay, what are the real reasons why they lost, no, 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 no. Um, instead, they want to cry racism and sexism. Well, people don't like my skin color and they don't like the fact that I have a vagina, right? Or the fact that, you know, I like to sleep with women, okay? I mean, you know, Lori Lightfoot, in her case, um, she claims she's a lesbian, but she also says she has the biggest penis in Chicago. So I'm not sure how that works. But uh, this is what Lori Lightfoot is saying in response to her loss. And I want to talk about this because I, I, I think it gives me a good chance to talk about why this is so unproductive for people uh who are actually trying to get ahead in life is to always cry racism or sexism or bigotry anytime they don't get their way so without further ado let's actually read about this and what lori lightfoot is saying and then we're gonna go over <laughs> how bad chicago is and i'm gonna uh talk to you guys about why this is just so stupid for her to do this so without further ado let's get into it uh, Democratic Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot blamed racism and her gender for her landslide defeat in her re-election bid as Chicagoans weary of the rising crime on her watch celebrated her fall from political rock star to rock bottom. Quote, I'm a black woman in America. Of course, she replied when asked by a reporter if she had been treated unfairly. But... Uh, she called being Chicago's mayor, quote, the honor of a lifetime. Regardless of tonight's outcome, we fought the right fights and we put this city on a better path, Lightfoot said, as she urged her fellow mayors around the U.S. not to fear being bold. <laughs> Amid heavy criticism from the crime wave, homelessness, and other troubles plaguing the city, the mayor had also injected race into the run-up uh, to the election. Quote, I'm a black woman. Let's not forget, Lightfoot 60 told the New Yorker in a piece that ran Saturday, quote, certain folks frankly don't support us in leadership roles. Wow. Wow. The Chicago Tribune called her loss a political embarrassment and argued that crime skyrocketed on her watch. Quote, Lightfoot campaign for mayor in 2019 by arguing crime was too high, saying she wanted to make Chicago the safest big city in the country. <laughs> well, that certainly didn't happen. The Tribune said in its analysis of how she went from political rock star to rock bottom, uh, quote, but homicides... Uh, mostly from gun violence uh, spiked dramatically in 2020 and 2021 from uh, 500 murders in 2019 to 776 and 804 in the next two years, respectively. Shootings and carjackings also skyrocketed. 
Violent crime in the city spiked 40% since she promised during her inaugural address to end the epidemic of gun violence that devastates families, shatters communities, holds children hostage to fear in their own homes, the Chicago Times reported. The paper attributed some of her woes to bad timing due to the pandemic and civil unrest following the murder of George Floyd in 2020. Quote, she almost embraced playing the heavy shutting down the lakefront and admonishing people to stay home. Uh, it played into her dictatorial personality, uh, aspiring an avalanche of hysterical memes. The mayor was smart enough to embrace the paper said. Um, yeah, so again, here's the thing. Here's the problem. Lori Lightfoot, again, unsurprisingly, is blaming racism slash sexism for why she lost. Okay, she's not blaming the fact that, again, Chicago uh, has an exodus of businesses because of crime okay so businesses are leaving people aren't visiting the city tourism is down again all this comes from crime okay you have failing schools in chicago as well too um the city is just an absolute disaster and it became worse under her watch not better and instead of taking responsibility for it and acknowledging that hey i have areas where i need to improve i'm not doing something right here Okay, I need to actually self-reflect. No, she refuses. She says, well, no, I lost because, you know, people don't like my skin color. They don't like, you know, my, my genitalia. Which, again, is fascinating because she got elected in the first place, right? If it was such a big deal, how the hell did you get elected in the first place? You know, I love when these people who are in positions of power, right, uh, who happen to be uh, women or, or women of color, okay, I love when they come up here and say, well, people don't want to see people like me in power and i'm like well how the hell did you get in power if that statement's true right if people don't want to see so-called women of color in power how the hell did you get elected i'm just saying it doesn't make sense you can't have it both ways you can't say people don't want to see people like you in power but you also have people like you getting elected it, it doesn't make sense the reality is that when you got elected and you got in the office you didn't do your job chicago is not the safest big city in america okay you actually made it less safe but again the point of my video is this people who do this right whether that be you know politicians or just normal regular everyday people right when you on the job you know when you're in school anything in life when you fail at something right when you when you when you don't accomplish a task if you don't get a job, if you don't get an opportunity that you think you deserve, and the first thing you do is cry racism or sexism, you will never, ever, ever self-improve or go anywhere in life. You will always fail. Well, why is that? The reason why is because crying racism and sexism is an excuse not to self-improve. That's you telling yourself that I'm perfect. There was nothing that I did wrong. There was nothing I could do to improve. And the only reason why I didn't get what I want is because of bigotry. Again, in Lori Lightfoot's case, it, it, it wasn't because she was making silly TikToks, right, while crime was out of control, okay, or that she was breaking her own laws, okay, uh, that she was putting on the books in terms of imposing more fines for people speeding, but then getting caught speeding throughout the city, right, having her security drive like wild men throughout the city for her, okay, it wasn't the fact that, again, uh, businesses are literally exiting uh, exiting the city, right, because of crime, okay? It's not the homelessness problem, the, the, the problem that manifested itself so much that you had homeless people in the airport, okay? It wasn't that, it wasn't any of those things, okay? It was, well, her skin color and her, her vagina. That's what it was. So, so again, tell me, how can you self-improve? What, what do you learn from that? You don't learn anything from it. Right. And again, th th this is the point of the video. There's a lot of people in life. Let's say, for example, when they don't get a job. Right. The first thing they do is say, well, they didn't like me because I was black. <laughs> right. They didn't like me because my hairstyle they didn't like me because I was, you know, a woman or whatever. Instead of, I don't know, looking at your resume and saying, OK, well, how can I improve my resume? What skills am I missing? What could I say during the interview to better you know, help my employer or potential employer understand what I bring to the table. Maybe I didn't dress properly. Maybe there's something I didn't do. What can I do to self-improve to make myself a better candidate, to make myself more hireable or employable? 
right? You will never go through that thought process when you continuously just blame the system and you blame the man. And don't get me wrong. Um, I had moments in my life where I did this as well, too. Right. When I was a freshman in college, right? At UNC Chapel Hill. OK. Uh, you know, and when you go to college again, it's, it's, it's nothing but liberal ideology everywhere. And as a black person, they tell you that you're oppressed and blah, blah, blah. And this was the beginning of the whole Black Lives Matter thing happening. Right. I didn't get good grades in school. Well, I mean, good grades relative to what I consider to be good grades. Okay, I had like a 3.0 GPA. And I thought that was bad. That was terrible. And I blamed the white man. Right? I said, it's the system. It's because I'm black. Okay, it's because I didn't have many opportunities as all these other people here. Right? Therefore, that's why I'm not getting gr good grades. Okay? But that wasn't actually the reason. Right? The reason is because I was not taking school as serious as I should have took school. Right? I wasn't doing my homework i wasn't studying okay i was doing too much you know things that college kids do right as freshmen i was doing too much of that and i wasn't doing enough of what it actually took to get good grades especially at an institution like unc chapel hill okay <laughs> those classes are not easy okay and i turned that around when i actually took responsibility for you know my actions and what i was doing and realized okay i need to study I need to actually do homework, right? I need to actually, you know, do the things that I'm supposed to do in order to get good grades. And then voila, my grades got better, right? Again, it's really that simple. Same thing in this situation with Lori Lightfoot. If she would have self-reflected instead of blaming the white man, okay, blaming sexism for her woes and the fact that people don't like her, if she actually would have, you know, looked in and said, you know, maybe I'm too full of myself. Maybe I need to actually focus more heavily on crime, Okay, and trying to fix that problem and address that problem and take it on head on instead of making excuses, instead of trying to deflect, instead of trying to pretend like it didn't exist. Like, for example, she didn't listen to William J. Kelly, the journalist from Newsmax, that kept telling her, your city's terrible. She revoked that guy's press credentials instead of listening to him. Maybe she should have listened to him and said, you know what, if this guy is in a position where he can ask me these type of questions about how bad my city's doing, maybe I need to be doing something better. Maybe I need to fix these problems uh, rather than to silence the individual that's telling me how bad my city is. But no, again, she chooses to silence criticism instead of actually reflecting on the criticism and saying, hey, let me fix this so that he can't say this anymore, right? Maybe if she would have done that, she would have got reelected. But no, uh, again, in, instead of acknowledging the reality, she ignores reality and then she wants to basically accuse her constituents of being racist and sexist against her, even though they voted for her in the first place. It's amazing how that works. Again, individuals who do this will never, ever, ever go anywhere in life. They will perpetually remain victims. They will perpetually remain at the bottom. They will never advance. They will never achieve their goals. They, they just won't progress because progression requires self-reflection. And acknowledging that, hey, I did something wrong, that I need to improve on something in order to win and to get what I want in life. It's really that simple. And that's the point of this video. Don't be Lori Lightfoot. Stop blaming sexism and racism and bigotry for why you don't get what you want in life and focus on improving what you can improve and controlling what you can control. And I guarantee you, you will have better outcomes. <laughs> I guarantee you. It's really that simple. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.